Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to take her and cut her out and add her oops, to this picture here. And I'm going to have her look like she's hitting apples out of the tree. So let me show you what I did. First, I need to cut her out. So I'm just going to use the selection brush tool. And I'm going to start up here, make the brush smaller, and just try and select just the stick. Now, if it gets too much, which it will, because there's a, oops, there's a brown tree in the background and it's trying to get brown on brown and that's difficult. So just hold the alt key down and that deselects. There we go. Okay. All right, now let's get her hand. And the rest of this twig here, I'm gonna leave this little bit cause it's not gonna really show in the picture. So it's not that big a deal. Hair is going to be a little harder. We'll have to uh, play with that some more. All right. Let's just get her body in there. That'll be easier. <laughs> Cause, yep. Real easy for it to see the, whoops, the black from the green. Now we just click, hold Alt and go up in here. Ow, that was way too close. All right. Make it really small. And I took this picture almost as this, well, the sun was down. It was, it was dark, so it's going to be grainy, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm just using it as an example. All right. The shoes don't have to be perfect either because they're going to be kind of set down in the grass of the other picture. So we just want to make sure we get enough of the shoes here. Okay. Let's come back up to her hair. All right. Now we're going to click on refine and I'm going to go over some the edges here and try and get some of these little things that are flying away. Now, if it puts the mask over too much, then I'm just click on foreground and brush on her hair and let it know that that's the foreground. And it'll select a little too much, probably. It actually did pretty good down here. All right, let's click on Matt again. Just get the ends and see see how much of these ends we can get. All right, I think that's going to be as good as it's going to get. So I'm going to feather it by well, about two pixels just to make it smoother. And I want it to be oh, a new layer and click Apply. And now we've got our new layer here and you can see how it's, it's smoother. It's not like super pixely and sharp, which is what I want. I want it to blend a little nicer into the other picture. And it's okay if there's little bits here and there, cause they're going to not really show up here in a minute. So let's turn on our background and we're going to pull her up above it. And there we go. So let's get her blended in. First, we need to make her a different size. If you click V on your keyboard, that's the move tool. All right, I want her to be standing down in the grass here. She's actually a little too tall. There we go. It's like she's trying to hit those apples out of the tree. All right, let's put a mask on her and fix her feet. So let's get the brush tool with our black paint and we want a soft brush. So it doesn't matter which soft brush. All right, well, a little bigger than that. And I'm just kind of brush around and just go up and down and just hide parts of her feet here and there. Just to make it look like she's standing down in the grass and not hovering above it. <laughs> that would look weird. All right. All right, now my favorite way to match colors is with a gradient map. It seems to work on almost everything. I haven't really found something, anything that hasn't worked on. So we are going to do that real quick. So click on her, go down here to the adjustments and get a gradient map and drag it down. So it's only on her. There we go. Now the reds are the shadows, the greens are the midtones and the blues are the highlights. So if we click on red, 
click on the color and get the dropper and bring it over here and pick out a shadow color from the background. So we'll just get that color and then do the same for the midtones. We want to pick out, some, well, I guess one of these greens will work for the midtone color. You can always go back and adjust and change and play around with it if it doesn't work out quite as well as you think. And click on blue. Oh, that. And let's, let's find our highlight color. And I think just this really light color right here. Not quite white. All right. Now for the blend mode, I usually use overlay or soft light, but in this case, the picture itself, the background that I'm trying to blend with is soft and kind of hazy. So a different blend mode is going to be needed. Sometimes multiply works, but not in this case. For this one, I'm going to use screen. And I am going to change the opacity a bit, just a little. And see how that just blended her right in there. Maybe, yeah, we can always go back and adjust it later. I love having everything on its own layer so I can go back and tweak anything I need to. So that was before and that was after. That just blended right into the picture. That's my favorite method for that. All right. Now let's make the rest of it look good. So let's go down here and let's get a curves layer. I kind of want to just, there we go. And up the highlights just a bit. And I like to change the lighting. So let's go to layer, new light filter layer and lighting. And we want that to be on the top, not down there. All right. Sometimes this will help blend everything together too. And sometimes I put, I change the lighting on the cutout, whatever I've cut out. But in this case, it blended so well, I didn't really need to. So we're going to figure out where the light's coming from. This tree has a little bit of a shadow right here. Oh, we do need to add her shadow. We'll do that in a minute. But uh, the shadow's going this direction, and there's some bright light right here, so we know the sun is coming this way. So we want to just kind of emphasize the light coming from that direction. So let's zoom out a bit. I don't want to, I don't want to go too far in and have, where to go? Have these black corners. Not in this picture, so I'm going to make sure that they're not there. Having a dark corner up here is okay, but I don't want one down there. And there we go. Oh, did it. And now we can just move this in and out to change the brightness. There we go. And I'm going to lower the specular. I don't think it needs to be all the way off, but not all the way on either. Okay. All right. Now we need to add her shadow. This is what I usually do. I just click on the cutout and control J. Just copy the whole thing. And uh, the bottom one here, we're going to call shadow. That way we remember which one is which. And let's open that up. And we can get rid of the gradient map. We don't really need that. So just click on it and delete it. And then we are going to add a recolor. So come up here and click on recolor. And make sure it goes down in her layer, in the shadow layer. And here, let me turn off on the top one there, that way we can see it. And I just take the lightness and go all the way down and it makes it black. And then get the move tool and we just want to shrink it. Oh, we'll turn her back on. There we go. And turn it and it needs to be a lot skinnier, maybe even a little taller. And just kind of put it and try and get it at the same angle as the other shadows. The only other one we have here is this one. We're going to make it look like that shadow. So we want it maybe like that. All right. Now let's come up here to layer, new light filter layer and blur and Gaussian blur. And did that go the right place? Okay. <laughs> Sometimes. Now let's blur it. And yeah, there you go. Now let's change the blend mode to multiply. And yeah, it's still not quite right. Let's click on the blur again. Let's go, let's type in 120. 
that's a little better. That's pretty close. All right. There we go. All right, well, she's pretty much in there. Now we can go back and do whatever we need to to blend further or leave it like this. Something else fun that I did was um, I went down here and added a black and white adjustment oh, all the way on top. And I'm going to switch, get my pin here. Oh, there we go. OK, so I wanted some of the apples to show through. So just get the brush tool. And for this, you want a hard brush for the apples anyway. So just get a hard brush. Make sure I've got black paint. And then zoom in. And you can just I'll make this a little smaller. You can just draw right on that black and white adjustment. And it will erase it over just what you want. And I just want the apples to show through. So you can go back and you make this as perfect as you want. Spend more time doing it on your own pictures. <laughs> yeah, just find them all. Find all the ones you want. And there we go. All right, I'm not going to do them all. It takes a long time to get all these little apples. But um, I was having some trouble with the apples on the bottom. I tried to do some of these, and I kept getting these weird lines, and it was really hard. And then if I switch to white paint, I can erase these, but the color was pretty faded, and it wasn't really there very well. So what I did was I just added a new layer, and under color, just get the, the picker tool there and just pick a green, and with the brush tool, just, whoops, let me zoom in a little bit. With the brush tool, just sort of brush on the color that you want. Now, I think I want a softer brush, actually, for this. Oh. A little bit bigger. OK, so you just brush the color right there on however, however you want, whichever ones you want. And then we're going to change the blend mode and just find one that works. Just kind of scroll down and overlay is pretty good. We can just lower the opacity. And now see they blend. They look just like the apples that we, we did on the black and white layer. But they don't have the weird lines and you have more control. So that's another way of doing it. Or you can do both ways and blend them. The same way. All right. Or blend it in the same picture using two different methods. OK. And now I'm going to add one last thing. I'm going to add an LUT. Oh, let's go over here and find the one we want. This computer does not have all the ones my other computer does. does so, But it does have this one that I made. Overcast Zoo. I like it. I just like the way it looks. It's a nice warming one. So you can put that on top and it'll blend the whole picture, including the black and white, which I like. You can take the black and white adjustment off if you want to. Oh, and then I would need to take those off, but yeah. And it just helps blend her even further. Just adding an adjustment like that. I, I like it with the uh, black and white though. I think it looks pretty good. Now let's do a before and after. So just click on this top layer, hold the shift key, and click on that layer. And that selects all the things that we did. And you just click on it. And that was before. And that's the after. So I hope you found something useful in this video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more. And thanks for watching.